of the NHS Trust um, in London and I've been working in research for about four years. So I work in or with um, in non-malignant haematology patients, so that means patients with blood disorders that aren't cancer related um, and my job is patient placing. So we normally recruit patients for clinical trials and clinical research, so drug trials and non-drug um, research um, and the patients can be on the trial for a few weeks over to a few years, it just depends on what the trial is, what the purpose of the trial is and what the outcomes they're looking for. So I was working in the NHS, or I've been working in the NHS since uni um, and when I left uni I sort of didn't know where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. Um, so I came across clinical research and I applied for the role and I sort of just was lucky enough to land the role and I ended up, <laughs> I've ended up in research ever since. Um, so I've been working in research, like I said, for about four years. My first role was a clinical trials coordinator and that was in respiratory medicine um, and I was doing that for about a year and a half and then I moved over to clinical research practitioner in Imperial and I've been doing that for two and a half years. Uh, so I did biomed, uh, biomedical science, um, a three year course so I didn't do the sandwich yet. Try and just get any entry job into the NHS. Once you get your foot in, t in the door of the NHS it's easier to work your way up um, rather than try to find a really high role that you may not be qualified or for that people in the NHS people who are already in the NHS are trying to go for as well and it's unlikely you'll be selected for it. So sort of just try any sort of find any sort of any entry level job um, that will get you into the NHS and it's easier to build your way up once you have the experience. Those two days the same. I, I work on uh, about ten clinical trials, um, which is more than the average of someone who's in my role. Um, but it so yeah the what I do isn't always the same. So the first thing I normally do as soon as I get in the office is check my emails. Um, Monday mornings are madness normally because I do work Monday to Thursday. So over the last, over Friday to Sunday, something has would have popped into my inbox. Um, so I normally check if I have emails from CRAs, if I have emails from patients, if I have emails from vendors, if I have emails from the sponsors themselves. Um, and just make sure that I prioritise my work. I normally check as well if I have any patient visits that day. Um, most days I do normally see one or two patients um, and the patient's visit, visits vary according to what the protocol says or according to what journey in the clinical trial the patient is. Um, so it could be a screening visit which is the first ever visit the patient does when they come into a clinical trial or it could be to know a week 72 visit so the patient's been on the trial for 72 weeks and it's normally a quicker visit so it does depend on what journey or where the patient is in the trial during the day as well i normally have meetings with r and d um, i normally have meetings with the investigators as well so it could be the prime uh, principal investigator or the sub investigator for the clinical trials just to sort of catch up on paperwork and um, catch up on what's been happening with the patients with um, some adverse events um, any adverse reactions that might have happened while, I, while I've been away or in any serious adverse events, which means normally a patient's in hospital or has been seriously ill or possibly died. So, yeah, that's what happens normally over the day. Um, I do also, when I do see a patient, um, as well as collecting the drug from the pharmacy and doing things like blood tests, ECGs, I do also process the samples myself once I've collected them. So just like it is in uni where you're centrifuging samples and look under, looking under microscopes and anacotting samples and sending them off, I still do that. Um, so my day is never unfortunately straightforward. Um, so the next thing I think for me is because I'm so used to managing a trial sort of from set up to when it's actually archived, I know how a trial is meant to work, the duration of the trial, things that I'm meant to look for. The next thing would be managing a trial on a project management level. With that, I know that I need to do something like a Princess 2 or an, another project management course just to, to boost my boost my knowledge. Um, so that's my next step. Um, I think with clinical research, especially with being a clinical research practitioner, it's, it's very important that 
mm -hmm. remember why we're doing it and because it's patient ba patient facing with our job we have to you have to love it you have to be in tune with the patients in tune with the disease that you're working on otherwise it can, can become very depressing very mundane um and i drive for you know clinical trial practitioners i drive is normally to help patients and to normally improve their their quality of life and their lifestyle um, each research job is different so it depends on what you want to do a clinical research practitioner role isn't for everyone a lot of people don't like to face patients but then you have other things that in the background that you can do like r d research development roles so that's not patient facing at all but that is still research based or you have things like clinical trial manager that you can do so there are a lot of roles within research that you can do that isn't patient facing but to each their own you sort of just have to remember why you why you're doing it and what you like doing and find a role that works for you patience is key <laughs> patience is key especially when working with nhs i'm working with so many different people and so many different um people on so many different levels um the patients themselves can be difficult you have the the vendors and the CRAs that can be difficult and you can have colleagues that are difficult so you know whenever you're in a job like this patience is key like make sure you don't lose your head if you are if you, if you feel like it's getting too much walk away come back um but don't let the job get on top of you I feel like that's the key thing make sure that you balance your life your life outside of work cool with the life outside uh, inside of work don't let your life your work life overtake yeah. you when you're applying for jobs, just keep persevering. There will be a job out there that works for you, even if you don't know it. Um, lesson that I've learned would say, I'd say, I think that was the biggest lesson that I learned. Um, I, I, I struggled at first when I left uni. I struggled with rejection and people saying no to me, um, as because when you are graduates, you have to make sure that you find something that sort of sets you apart from everyone else. But you eventually find a role that works for you. So if you have NHS experience, it's a lot easier. So, like I said before, try and just get any role into the NHS. Um, and then once you have a role in the NHS, it's a lot easier to work your way up. Um, if you're fresh out of uni, once again, NHS experience is key. Um, whether it's a band four, band three, band two, band five job, as long as you get something within the NHS, someone's a lot more likely to recruit you. Um, if it's if you can't get a job within the NHS but you still want to work in research, then find something pharmaceutical companies or something that is still research based, whether it's whether it's academic or pharma. Um, find something that's still sort of linked to the industry that you want to work in, and you should be able to get a job. But yeah. don't give up. <laughs> that's my my main takeaway. Don't give up. So a trial coordinator in the NHS is normally a lower level than a trial practitioner. So you normally have trial coordinators normally a band five, trial practitioners are normally six and seven. So it's just, when you're a practitioner, it normally means that you have no, more knowledge on it yeah, within research. So you know you know more about GCP, you know more about the journey of research, um, you know more about the phases, you have more experience working across the phases, so from phase one to phase four, rather than just phase three and four. Um, that's the main difference, it's just your level of experience. So a trial manager, you're normally working on one specific trial. Um, so it could be for a pharmaceutical company or could be something that is uh, academic, academically sponsored. Um, whereas a clinical trial practitioner, you're working across multiple trials or across multiple diseases. Um, not just one. Um, normally trial manager as well, you, you're normally in charge of the trial. So it's similar to working as a CRA, um, where you have to make sure that where you're monitoring the trial, you have to, some, sometimes you're going across multiple sites, um, you are checking the site file, you're checking the patient visits, you're checking that everything is, is done according to GCP and according to protocol. Um, whereas as a child practitioner, you're the one who's actually carrying out the trial. So that's, that's the difference. Leaving uni, I didn't know what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. And I only felt like there were two avenues, medicine or a lab job. And I could have gone into medicine, but I knew I like, probably wouldn't have gone into it. Um, and lab, uh, I wasn't suited to a lab, let's just say that. So I, need, so I think it's a platform like this is 
is key because people who do uh, life sciences don't always know where they want to go so this just shows that there are avenues out there that there are multiple jobs that you can go into it's not just sort of like this or or the other there are other things that you can do and you can find something that is suited to you